Welcome to chapter 34, where we will be configuring our subscriptions with pre-auth Spring Security. Now you go ahead to my GitHub, so fill up JVM and go to the Learn Spring Boot GraphQL repository and go ahead and, and grab this code. And if you don't want to listen to the video, that's fine. Just grab the code and, and, and play with it. But I'm going to be walking through this and really telling you my change. Now, if we go to GraphQL and we submit a normal GraphQL request, well, you'll be able to see that what we do is in the request, we send these headers. So authorization here, user ID roles, these are all sent to the server as an HTTP header. But with WebSockets, we do not have that luxury because WebSockets don't have HTTP headers and instead we have to come up with a new mechanism. So what we do with, with WebSocket and GraphQL is that when you subscribe or call a subscription, it will actually send a, a frame first and that will be the connection in it frame. So if we come here, you'll see that there's the connection in it frame followed by the start payload, which is actually the GraphQL operation. And as you say, there's a, there's a small delay between these, but it's very small. And with that, because we know that now, the first thing we have to do is actually go and disable our Spring Boot GraphQL security config for HTTP on the subscriptions endpoint, because we're going to create a new mechanism for that. So go ahead and disable that. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this Apollo subscription connection listener. And it has callback methods on connect, on start, on stop, and on terminate to perform our authentication and to propagate the authorization on the operation. Now let's go ahead and actually debug this. And I'm going to show you method. So whenever I submitted that, I first have the connection in it. So I'll now I'm breakpointed here. Here's the connection in it, which is called onConnect. And then we have the start payload, which is the next message which was sent. And we can service that. And that's actually going to then stop in our subscription. It's actually going to call here. And then we have an active web socket connection running to our client. And then when you hit stop, you see there's a stop message sent to the, the server. We have the stop message here. And then we have the stop callback. And that's good. So now that we know that, what we can do is we can use the on connect callback to go ahead and extract out the payload, which if you remember, contains the bearer token, IDP, or user ID and user rules with this connection in it. And inside here, then we can perform authentication to really identify who the user is and reject them if they are not valid or if they're not who they say they are. It's really important we do that in OnConnect. Now we do not, you set the Spring Security Context Holder on OnConnect due, due to some NIO multi-threading issues that can happen in Tomcat 9, which I'll talk about in a moment. So what we do in, instead is we create the token and we set it within the session. And this is the WebSocket session or the subscription session. So this will be the same subscription session that will be used in the on start, on stop and on terminate. But before I explain any more about why I don't use Spring Security at this point, I really want to draw it and try and explain it. So let's say we have two WebSocket clients connected, so myself and you the person, the guy who's watching this video, and we have a WebSocket connection, each connected to the server. So you can see this is the WebSocket connection here. And let's say we're connected to, to one server. So this is one server. Well, the first thing we have in, in Tomcat here is a thread pool with a small number of threads. 
And what their job is to do is to iterate over all of the active web socket connections to check for new frames. And if there's a new frame, then it takes the socket and will tell this larger work, this thread pool, so it'll add it to a queue for this thread pool, and this will have a configurable size as well as this. Well, it tells this, it gives it a work item, it says client one has a new frame available, so you should read off this socket. So this way you can have lots of numbers of clients connected, and then you can maintain them connections open and at maximum you're going to have one thread open per active connection as long as it's within your limit. So is it, so it passes the socket to this thread pool. Well this guy will then have exclusive access to that socket. He will not be checking it anymore and also this guy, these guys cannot read off this. So you're guaranteed that the socket will be read sequentially by one thread and how that works is now once it's picked it up it has a it has exclusive access it's going to read the first frame and once it reads the frame it's going to execute it within the, the callback or whatever needs to happen so that in our case it's going to be the first frame will be on connect as you can remember on connect and then once it's finished with the onConnect, well, it actually, before it releases the socket back to this guy, it says, do we have another message? And at this point, if the second message, which is this one, is not in the server, well, then it will release the socket back to, to here, which is then subject to be being checked again. And whenever there's another message comes in, which is the start, it identifies it and it can then give that socket to a different thread in this thread pool. So it's not guaranteed that the that, that this that the init, the start, the stop methods will be executed by the same thread here. But there is a guarantee that if they happen always at the same time then whenever the first thread picks up the first frame, before it releases it back, as it checks, do I have another frame? So can I keep access to the socket? I want to drain it completely, read everything. Well, then it's going to read the second frame, which will happen in the same thread directly after. So that's why it may be serviced by the same thread, but it may not, and that relies on timing which in my opinion is gen generally a bad idea. We should not rely on timing to be correct. So that's why we do not set the Spring Security context here because I don't think that there's a guarantee that it will be the same thread that always executes here if we have a delay. And as you can see, there is a time difference. So let's say if there's a network delay or there's a bug in the front end client or whatever reason, we don't want to rely on, on timing. So that's, that's why we don't set it here. So instead, what we do is we use the session because we know that only one, one thread can service one client. Therefore, if we read the session, we set the user properties in to the session. So we read from this message, set it into the session. Well, then when the second message executes, it executes on the same session, which will have access to the original properties. And as long as it's the client, it's the valid client, they weren't terminated on onConnect, well then we can trust the authorization at that point. And because we're going to service the operation on the start payload, this guy, well then we can set the context in this thread because the thread executing this will share the thread executing, will be the same thread executing the bank account. So let's go ahead and debug this and I'll, I'll show you. So if I do bank accounts update per ID, this is coming in, the server. So first we have init, that's executor four. We have on connect, it's executor four. And then we have the start, still executor four. And we start it. So these two messages were sent at the same time, therefore we are on the same thread, executor four. We're still in executor four here. 
and therefore the socket's now active. But if we stop this, there's the stop message coming up. You'll see now it's an executor six, so it's a different thread. So this guy here is identified, ah, there's the stop message, but there was a gap between these. Therefore it sent it to another thread, a different thread that serviced the first two. Therefore it's executor six on stop. So you can imagine if we have the same delay for whatever reason inside these two. So that's why I don't trust in, in Tomcat NIO to put these on the, to, to, to use this at this point or the spring security context at this point. Now, instead, or, or let's actually prove that. So if I actually issue the on stop, it'll be on the same thread. So if I go bank account for ID, I'm debugging. I haven't serviced the requests and I stop it. So here we're on executor eight with the connection in it. We play. We're still on connect, connection eight. There's the start on connection eight. And the stop will be on executor eight as well. So as you can see on stop, still on executor eight because it didn't release the thread back to the pool because it got all three messages in, in basically one up while it had exclusive access to the thread. So that's why we have intermittent failures. And I actually found somebody who posted that this was intermittent. It works sometimes, but not always. But and as you can see here, the time it doesn't work is because it's on a different NIO thread. So I suspect he has a delay between the listener and actually the second start request from his client. So this is my hypothesis, which I was able to prove. So if I go ahead and, and play this, on stop so yeah how we get a, how we work around that is we set the session which is we know is always going to be the same session and then on start is this is the method that's called before we set the authorization here therefore this is the same thread that's going to be servicing the security check and therefore we have access at this point to that so if i go back here and I go to playground and I change the user roles to be incorrect. Bank account per ID. These are sent in. I set the user off and then on start. Then I set the security context and that's an executor 10. Well then you'll see here we threw an exception because the user doesn't have permission because I, I changed the wrong parameter. We then sent that back to the client. The client then said, ah, oh, we've got an error. Let's stop. It sent a stop message. It's a service and different request. And then, yeah, we can do nothing at that point because we lost this original thread. And as long as we, on this on start method, always have override the current authentication, then we should be okay. As long as there's no conditional logic here because we know in Java, only one process or one task can execute at a thread at a single time. It's not like coroutines in Colin. Therefore, we know that this on start method will be on the same thread executing as the subscription thread without any other tasks interleaving. Therefore, we can rely at this point on the Spring Security context holder. Or if you don't really know which connector you're using in Tomcat or with, other, with whatever server, then perhaps you just want to remove this completely and rely on the data fetching environment, which can always will contain the session. So this will always have the session and inside the session, we know we have the authentication token. Therefore you don't need spring security to perform that. You can just do that easily in, in the code. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and are able to set up and yeah, secure your subscription endpoints with Tomcat NIO. And hopefully I explained that uh, somewhat understandable <laughs> for you guys. And I will see you in chapter 35. Thank you very much.